Our next guest is a Wilmington native, NC State alum, and also married to Eric Trump, the president's son. We want to welcome and just so honored to have with us the president's daughter-in-law, Laura Trump, with us here on Coastal Daybreak. Hi, Laura. How are you? Hey, Ben. It's so nice to be on with you. It's uh, great to have you on the show. Uh, are you back in North Carolina now? I understand you were getting ready to visit. So, Well, I was there Thursday through Sunday. Hmm. Flew my son back to New York. I was in Charlotte yesterday. and Now I'm back in New York. So I've been with you quite a bit. I just am not there currently. Well, we're, we're glad to have you back. And I know Wilmington, my, my, uh, one of my brothers lives in Wilmington, too, right there where the storm came in. You had a chance to see firsthand what was going on. Yeah, it was, um, I will say, I think the Wilmington and Wrightsville Beach area truly was, 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 I mean, really lucky. It could have been so much worse. You know, when I heard it could be a four or five, uh, that was absolutely terrifying to me. Um, but where I think the the most impact that I saw occurred was really inland. I, I was in Brunswick County all day on Friday, and honestly, the people there have been truly devastated. Um, mm-hmm. Places that you know, we're not in flood zones. Uh, people never thought in a million years their houses were going to be flooded, had like seven feet of water in their houses and in some cases. And, you know, life is never going to be the same for them. They, in some cases, will never live in their homes again. Um, and, and they're really starting from scratch. So um, I was honored, honestly, that they let me into such a, a personal space for them and into their, their private lives to, to let me see the damage and talk to me a little bit. Um, it, it was really special to do that. And, you know, I just wanted to let them know we haven't forgotten about you guys. You know, you see the, the news coverage whenever these storms are, are on the way and happening and this constant 24-hour coverage of it. And then as soon as it leaves, all the, the press leaves, too. So right. you, you kind of tend to forget about it. And I, I wanted to make sure they knew that, you know, everybody's still thinking of them. The president is thinking of them and, you know, the the – the recovery is going to be long and, and they need a lot of support and really just wanted to encourage people to continue to volunteer and continue to donate to help these people because they've got a long road to recovery ahead. Well, that's so nice uh, of you to say and, and important uh, to hear as well, too. And we appreciate that there is a North Carolina connection uh, that uh, that has the has the year of the White House from time to time. And we also, we very much appreciate when President Trump uh, landed at Cherry Point and came into our area as well. And, um, and he had a chance to be up close and personal with a number of the folks who have been affected by the storm. And I, I know that had an impact on him and we, we do appreciate that. It's not like there's not other things going on. I mean, uh, <laughs> there's a little, yeah. a little other happening out there. Yeah, but, a little uh, bit. Um, you know, that, was, that was important to him, I know, to come down there. And he actually checked with me on and off uh, throughout that entire week of the storm to, to get my perspective on how things were going you know, storm prep for my family, for the area. Did people need more? He was really involved, and, and I know he cared greatly to ensure that, you know, the, the right things happened down there. Now, uh, one of the things that uh, we certainly want to know, as a North Carolina native, have you been able to introduce any Eastern North Carolina barbecue into the White House? That's, a, <laughs> that's an important thing to know. Well, I haven't <laughs> taken it into the White House yet, but I did encourage on his visits down to North Carolina that he switch up from the usual McDonald's and maybe try some Bojangles every now and again. So oh, there I you do go. Think that, I do think that I got that in a couple of times. That's progress. All right. Uh, <laughs> but there are a number of things going on. I want to start with one of the great things that just happened recently was the signing of the uh, new trade deal between Mexico, Canada, and the U.S. He said it would happen. Uh, the president said it would happen. And all the critics were, were, were down on him about his uh, so-called trade wars. But this is really bringing a very important thing. And for North Carolina, you know, businesses yeah. is going to be very important. Yeah, well, I, I give the president so much credit. You know, you see what he's got to fight against every single day. And yet we still have these incredible achievements like this. Mm-hmm. Being it, it, happening on a daily basis, there's actually a major achievement under this White House every 36 hours. You just never hear about it because the media wants to focus on everything else. Um, this is something that I know for a long time has bothered my father-in-law, well before he, he ran for the presidency. You know, the, the imbalance of trade throughout the world and, you know, the negative impact it has on this country and our companies within this country and manufacturing within this country 
um, this was something he really wanted to see happen. And of any person you could possibly want negotiating trade deals, wouldn't you want a businessman? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, it's absolutely. shocking to me that people didn't think he could get this done because I knew his history of negotiating. And, and believe me, he's been in there with the best of them. And, and he generally comes out on top. So, uh, you know, I just want to say congratulations to everybody, especially, by the way, my, my brother-in-law, Jared, I know, mm-hmm. worked really, really hard on this. And um, just really proud to see it. And you're right, it's, it's going to affect North Carolina. And, and I hear it every time I come down there. The, the way that things are changing down there for the better the manufacturing coming back, you know, the farmers in the area feeling positive impacts of things that this president is doing. Um, my family actually in Sampson County are farmers. So mm-hmm. um, this is, it, it is very close to home for me. I'm really proud of what he's doing. And it just should be, by the way, a reminder to people, you can't listen to the critics. Because remember, they yeah. said that, that there was no way he was going to get above 3% growth. And we're at 4.2% right now. So, there's so much more to come from this president, um, but all the more reason, really, that we have to pay attention to the midterms, keep a Republican majority in Congress, because all the good things that we've seen happen could come to a screeching halt if the Democrats take control of the House and Senate, and, and that's something that we're focused on, you know, so much right now. Alara Trump is our guest. Of the um, uh, President Trump's Donald Wall married to Eric Trump went to NC State. What was your major at NC State? Uh, communication media. Oh, really? So I worked in television oh, for a while. Part yeah. of the fake news media, if you believe it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. My my major at William and Mary was uh, broadcasting and politics. So yeah, here I am <laughs> perfect, <laughs> talking to you. Yeah. Perfect fit. Uh, but uh, are you still doing any? I know you were doing an interview program online. So are you still doing some of that? Oh yeah. You know, we like to call it the real news, and mm-hmm. not against the fake news. Um, it, it actually really organically came together. We, like I was mentioning, we we, we heard, hear about all these great things that this president is doing for the country, but they don't get shared with anyone because you, if you turn on the TV, all they're covering is all the nonsense. So we said, why don't we put together a program? We're going to highlight the achievements every week of this administration, and we're going to talk to people who have insights, you know, about the president or about what's happening within the administration. So we post those on the president's Facebook page every week. And, I mean, they seem to be liked. We, we get about a million views every time we post them. It's shocking to there me you go. Um, that anybody tunes in to see me. But I, I think it's awesome because I really do want people to know that this is a president that's working really, really hard for them. Um, he barely sleeps. He's always kind of been like that. He's the hardest <laughs> worker I've ever met. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm incredibly proud of, of what he's doing and, and just really wanted to make sure that everybody could tune in and hear about that if they wanted to. One thing I genuinely appreciate about about uh, President Trump is his humor and his down to earth. He's just got this great down to earth guy next door mm-hmm. attitude when he speaks and when he when he talks and and I really really genuinely appreciate about that. Is, is he like that all the time? You know, when you guys get together <laughs> for dinner and stuff. Oh my gosh, he is, he's one of the most fun dinner guests you could ever imagine having. He has stories unlike anybody I've ever met, and he's <laughs> a great storyteller. Uh, he always cracks me up, but you know what, you're right, and, and it's funny because people didn't fully understand, I think, during the 2016 campaign, sure. how he was so relatable to people, but it's because of that. It's because of just what you're saying. He speaks like we all speak. It's not a bunch of, you know, political nonsense that people can't fully understand and that we don't know all the terminology for. He talks like you and I talk, like everybody talks, and it's so refreshing, quite frankly, to have somebody that says what we're all thinking and and finally was calling people out for things that we all for years, you know, had the same ideas about. So yeah. um, I, I think that's one of his very charming qualities as well. I totally agree with you. If, if um, unfortunately, if there are People that um, in the Trump administration that think that maybe we're not hearing the, about the good news, that's not correct. Uh, we're, we are ignoring the bad news, and we are hearing the good, <laughs> good news. So. Good, good. Well, you know what? The, the way that I always gauge it, and I tell the president this often, is I, going out there and being all different parts of, in all different parts of the country, you know, because the number of people that come up to me and say, please thank your father-in-law, for everything he's doing. You know, I can send my kid to college now because I got such a great pay raise or I have a new job that I couldn't have had before. 
the, the changes happening in this happening in the country are palpable and people may not always tell a pollster that they will vote for Donald Trump but you better bet whenever their bottom line is looking a lot better and they have a brighter future for their family they certainly are going to go in there and they're going to vote for him in 2020 I have no doubt about it I feel very very strongly about it and everywhere I go the number of people that tell me how much better their lives are right now Thanks to this president, I mean, he is doing something right. And I think, you know, I agree. I think people feel it more than anything. Even if they aren't hearing it, they feel it. Yes, and and even though we do have a, a, a targeted agenda, a targeted media that wants to tell us uh, that uh, he is only appealing to certain groups, that's not true. We we see it all the time. We see the appeal across many diverse groups, and uh, and I think that's very important to note. Yeah, no, it is. And, uh, you know, the the media likes to play all different kinds of cards and, and try and stir people up. But, again, at the end of the day, when people know that they have a president, number one, who's fighting for them, but who's also looking out for them and their future and their family's future, I think it means a heck of a lot more to them than, than whatever nonsense, you know, they hear out there on the mainstream media. And, and I think, honestly, he's, he's, people will, I think, reflect back, back on this time right now mm-hmm. and see that this is a president who finally held the media accountable and, and called them out for things that no one else, let's face it, would have done. Um, and hopefully, you know, our country is better because of it one day. And, and down the road, we can, we can finally not have fake news anymore. It would be really nice to see. Okay, finally, as we as we are speaking with Laura Trump, again, Eric's uh, wife and the um, um, uh, and the president's uh, daughter in law. Just finally, I just I just hope that you know that I know that Lindsey Graham uh, and and the president haven't always agreed on things. Uh, but with Lindsey Graham's speech before the Senate Judiciary Committee, his outrage at what was going on with a fine man there was heard. That was heard by oh. a lot of people. Yeah, he was, uh, how incredible. Kudos to Lindsey Graham. That was so impassioned and so genuine and so real. It was the Spartacus speech that someone else tried to give, but that he actually achieved. And it wasn't a contrived thing. I think it was, again, very genuine. And I think he spoke what was on a lot of people's minds. Um, you know, what what you've seen happen here is is so ridiculous and so horrible. And to try and you know, take a, a, a man's career who, has, you know, has never had a blemish in his That's life right. and, and try and bring his entire family down. It's, it's crazy, but well, kudos to Lindsey Graham. I hope that we get a chance to talk again. Uh, Laura Trump, uh, again, uh, the president's daughter-in-law, North Carolina native, and uh, welcome back to the state anytime. Come up uh, come upstate from Wilmington and visit us in Morehead City sometime. Yeah, right. thanks so much. Thanks for joining us on Coastal Daybreak on the Talk Station.